Hello GED math students or any math students that are watching this video. I'm going to show you some examples of the types of questions you could see on the GED math test that don't allow you to use a calculator. I'm going to go over seven questions in this video. So let's look at the first one. It says which expression is undefined in the set of real numbers? So what does this word mean? I'm trying to figure out which one of these are undefined. Well, undefined simply means that if you plug it into the calculator, you will get out an error message. And this is what will give you an error message on the calculator if you divide by zero. So what, what I'm going to do is just show you some examples of undefined expressions. In other words, you cannot divide by zero. There can't be a zero in the bottom. This is undefined. Um, this would be undefined. Anything where you divide by is zero is undefined. And you can't take square root of negative numbers. For example, if I took the square root of negative 9, you can't have a negative sign inside the square root symbol. So again, what you need to remember for the GED is no zeros on the bottom. You can't divide by zero. So this is undefined, this is undefined. No negative signs inside the square root or radical symbols. So there's a negative sign inside this square root symbol. This is undefined. Let's look at a couple examples that are okay, just so you're clear on the difference. These would be okay in green. If I flip this, this is okay. If the zero's on top, it's okay, it's not undefined. Same thing here if I flip this. All right, it is 0 divided by negative 2. This is OK. And if there's no negative inside the square root symbol, this is OK too. And you can also have a negative outside the square root symbol. So if you had something like this, for example, if the negative is outside the square root symbol, this is OK as well, just so long as it's not inside. So these expressions are undefined in blue. So based on that, what do you think the answer is for question 1? Well, hopefully you're thinking A, right? Right here. Because there's a negative sign inside the square root symbol and we're done. So let's go to the next one. There's a whole bunch of stuff here and you can read this. This stuff here is just explaining how they came up with this expression. But in reality, the question is here. This is the question. Which values of x make the expression undefined? So which values of x make this expression undefined? And again, this up here is just explaining how they got the expression. You don't really need this information. It's just there to kind of throw you off. But I do recommend when you're taking the test that you still read this. So remember, we cannot have a zero down in the bottom. Remember, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. Anytime you have a zero down in the bottom, it's undefined. If the zero is on the top, it's OK. So in other words, I want to know which values of x, when I plug it into this expression, make the bottom part go to zero. So for example, x could equal 4 and 6, or x could equal 0 and 4, and so on. So again, I'm only concerned about the bottom. I don't care about the top. If the top zero, it's not undefined, only if the zero is bottom. So if I plug in an x value here into the bottom and it comes out zero, the expression is undefined. So let's start with a. Let's say x is four. So I'm gonna plug in the, these are my x values here, x equals four. So let's rewrite this expression. 6 minus x divided by x quantity x minus 4. I just rewrote this expression. Actually, you know what? I don't, again, I'm not worried about the top. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just worried about the bottom. For, don't worry about the top. Just bring the bottom part over. Just the x times x minus 4. If the bottom part goes to 0, then it's undefined. And this is the bottom part. Don't even worry about the top. It'll save you time. So what I'm going to do is plug in this 4 for x. If it comes out 0, it's undefined. So let's do that. Replace this x with 4 and this x with 4. So I'm just looking at the 4. Now, by the way, 
there is a time sign right here it's not showing put that in there it's a hidden time sign it's really right here so this really means x times the quantity x minus 4 so put that time sign in there and now I'm just looking at x equals 4 right here so wherever I see an x right here and here I will replace it with 4 I'll worry about the 6 later okay so here's an x replace it with 4 times this x replace it with 4 and then just bring this minus 4 down right here and then we're gonna simplify this if it goes to 0 it's undefined so remember PEMDAS or your order of operations you do what's inside the parentheses before the multiplication so I'll bring the 4 down the time sign down and what's 4 minus 4 that's just 0 and you can keep the parentheses in there it doesn't matter you don't have to I'm not going to so this goes to 0 and then I multiply what's 4 times 0 that equals 0 so when I plug in a 4 I get out a 0 so 4 makes this expression undefined so 4 is a possible answer and I, I, I'm gonna need to check 6 too these are both gonna have to work but I know now that any answer that contains a 4 is a possible answer. So what I'm going to do is get rid of any of these answer choices that don't contain a 4. Well, let's see. B contains a 4 right here, so it might be a possible answer. C doesn't contain a 4, so I get rid of it. And D doesn't contain a 4. It just says C, the value of x is only 0. And for D, it says the value of x is only 6. They don't contain values of 4, so I'll get rid of D. I'm down to two choices now and if you needed to guess at this point your chances of guessing increase what I'm going to do now is replace x with 6 and if it goes to 0 my answer is 0 a is going to be the correct answer so let's clear this out right here I'm going to replace the x with 6 now so let's do that replace each x with the 6 I'm just focused on the 6 now so Replace this x with 6, bring down your time sign, replace this x with 6, bring down your minus 4, simplify this so this becomes 6 times, what's 6 minus 4? That's 2. 6 times 2 is 12. So when I plug in a 6, I don't get out a 0. So 6 does not make this undefined. Only 4 does. So for A to be my answer, 4 and 6 need to make it come out to 0, and only the 4 did. The 6 did not. So this is not my answer, and I'm just left with B. So my final answer is B. And trust me, if you plugged in a 0 for X here and here, you would get out a 0 as well. Let's go to the next problem. It says determine the value of the following expression if x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. So let's do that. I'm going to highlight this piece right here, x equals 3 and y equals negative 2, and I have this expression. So first of all, this deals with PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I'm going to box this and this. And in case you forget, PEMDAS works as follows. You read from left to right, just like you read text. And you start with parentheses first. So you do the parentheses first, then the exponents, then multiplication and division. Well, I box those because they're on the same level. So you do what you see first. Then you do the addition and subtraction last. And I box those because you do what you see first. They're on the same level. So we're going to use this concept to simplify this. So let's rewrite this expression over here, 4x minus 3y squared plus xy. And what I'm going to do is wherever, well, first of all, let's think this through. What does 4x mean? Well, there's a hidden time sign right there. Let's put it in. Minus 3y squared. This really means 3 times y squared. Remember those time signs like to sneak in and out. Plus xy. This really means x times y. So put those time signs in there. Then what I'm going to do is wherever I see an x, I'll replace it with 3. Wherever I see a y, I'll replace it with 
negative 2. So let's do that. Bring down your 4. Bring down your time sign. X, replace that with 3. So I'll replace this X with 3. Bring down your minus sign. Bring down your 3. Bring down your time sign. And I replace the Y with negative 2. But when you're using, when you have a negative number, when you're replacing a letter with a negative number, you use parentheses. So I want to put a parentheses around the negative 2 because it's negative. Then bring down your squared. Bring down your plus. X is 3, so replace the X with 3. Bring down your time sign. And the Y value is negative 2, so I replace this Y with negative 2. But since it's negative, I'll use parentheses. Now all I need to do is simplify this. And remember, we need to use the order of operations. We go from left to right. And there's a whole bunch of stuff here. We need to do the parentheses first. Well, there are parentheses, but there's really no operations inside the parentheses. There's just one number inside this parentheses and one number here. What I'm saying is if we had something like this, like 6 plus 2, and we had two numbers inside the parentheses with an operation, then we would do this operation first. But that doesn't really occur, so I'm not really worried about the parentheses. I next check for exponents, because we do exponents next. And let's see, are there any exponents? Boom, right here. So I need to do this piece of the puzzle next, right here. So I'm just going to do the negative 2 squared and bring everything else down. So bring down the 4, bring down the time sign, bring down the 3, bring down the minus sign, bring down the 3, bring down the time sign. And I'm going to do this piece here first because it's exponents. So negative 2 squared. What is negative 2 squared? What does that equal? Remember, exponents mean repeated multiplication. So this just means to multiply the negative 2 by itself twice. So it means negative 2 times negative 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative times negative is positive. When it's a positive number, you don't need to show the positive sign. Just write it as 4. So in other words, negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm just going to simplify this and make it a 4. Again, you can show that positive sign right here, but you don't have to. Now let's bring down the rest. Plus, bring that down, bring down your 3, bring down your time sign, and bring down your negative 2. Okay, let me erase this now just to kind of keep things clean. Now we need to keep going. Now let's see, we have multiplication, subtraction, multiplication, addition, multiplication. Well, what do I do first? I always do multiplication before I do addition or subtraction. So I got to do the multiplication next. So I need to do this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here. So I'm going to do all the multiplication. 4 times 3, 12. Bring down your minus sign. 3 times 4, 12. Bring down your plus sign. 3 times negative 2. Well, let's think this through. What's 3 times 2? That's 6. And then just bring down your negative sign right here. And now we have subtraction and addition. What do I do first? Reading from left to right, do I do subtraction or addition first? Well, here's, here's addition and subtraction right here. I box them because they're at the same level or say, same priority, so you do what you see first. If you see the addition first, you do it first. If you see the subtraction first, you do that first. Reading from left to right, I see the subtraction first, so I'll do that first. So I'll do this piece right here. What's 12 minus 12? Right here. 12 minus 12 is 0. And then bring down the plus negative 6. Well, what's 0 plus negative 6? Hopefully you're thinking negative 6. So that is my final answer. It's A. Now, real quick on the 0 plus negative 6, let me just kind of do a quick refresher here. Here's how I think of 0 plus negative 6. Because sometimes these zeros get confusing. Whenever you add negative, just think of moving left on the number line. Adding negative means to move left on the number line. So it's 0. I move left 6 on the number line. I end up at negative 6. 
Here's another way to look at it. Adding negative is the same as subtracting. So I can rewrite adding negative as subtracting 6. And I can look at it as temperature. It's 0 degrees outside. It goes down. Subtraction means it goes down 6 degrees. The new temperature is 6 below 0. Now don't get this all confused with multiplication. If I had 0 times negative 6, whenever you multiply by 0, you get out of 0. So keep that straight. Hopefully that helps you with this piece. Let's go to the next problem. It says, which value of x will make this equation true? Well, I have four answer choices, so these are my x values. Does x equal 3? Does x equal 6? Does x equal the square root of 6? Or does x equal the square root of 12? A little bit confusing again. I'm going to rewrite this equation over here x squared equals the square root of 36. Now, I am not going to solve for x here. What I'm going to do is just simplify this side. I'm going to bring down my x squared. And what is the square root of 36? Do you know what the square root of 36 is? What number times itself is 36? Well, that's 6, right? 6 times 6 is 36. So Instead of writing the square root of 6, I'm just going to rewrite this piece as 6. So I'm really going to look at this form of the equation right here, x squared equals 6. So let me clean this out here. And I'm going to look at the equation like this, x squared equals 6. So again, I just changed the square root of 36 to 6. Now, what I'm, here's what I'm doing. I'm looking for some number that when I square it gives me 6. Well. Let's say x is 3. I'll replace this x with 3. And I'll square it. Does 3 squared equal 6? I put a question mark above this. What do you think? Does 3 squared equal 6? No, it doesn't. Remember, 3 squared does not mean 3 times 2. It means 3 multiplied by itself 2 times. So 3 squared is 3 times 3 which does not equal 6, right? 3 times 3 is 9. And this, this little thing means not equal to. So 3 does not work. 3 squared is not 6. So I can get rid of A. So let's get rid of A. A is gone. Let's try B. Let's see. I'm going to replace the X with 6. So let's see. The X becomes a 6. And then I'll bring down my squared. And does 6 squared equal 6? No, 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36, and that does not equal 6. So B doesn't work either. See you later, B. At this point, if this bottom part here confuses you, you can guess at this point. You have a better chance of guessing, but let's keep going. Square root of 6. So what I'm going to do now is replace what it says here is x equals the square root of 6. So wherever I see an x, I'll replace it with the square root of 6. So replace the x with the square root of 6. Bring down your squared sign. And does this equal 6? Well, this is kind of cool. Watch this. I want to know if this equals 6. So the square root of 6 squared means you take the square root of 6 and multiply it by itself two times. So this means the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. Does that equal 6? Well, there's a rule in math that says if you have two numbers inside a square root with two square root symbols, you can write it as one big square root and put each number inside this, these little square roots together like this. In other words, the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the same as writing one square root and putting each 6 inside. These are identical expressions, so that's a rule in math. So in other words, the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the same as the square root of 6 times 6. Now does this equal 6? Well, let's break this down some more. Let's bring down our square root. What's 6 times 6? That's 36. Does the square root of 36 equal 6? Yes, it does, right? Because the square root of 36 is 6, which equals 6. So C is my answer. Let's go to the next one. 
multiply these numbers and round your answer to the nearest hundredth right here. Okay, so it's 3.25 times 2.1. Now, in a previous video, I said you could do this. I, I said you could take 5 times 1 right here and put a 5 there. And then I said in the previous video, any number that my, let me start over that, my answer has to end in 5. It has to end in 5. So what I do is I went over and I said, okay, this ends in 5, this ends in 5, this ends in 5, so I can get rid of C. That doesn't work in this problem because it tells us to round to the nearest hundredth. If it just said multiply these numbers and it didn't say to round to the nearest hundredth, then my little trick would work. But this is different because it says round to the nearest hundredth. So we got to multiply this whole thing out. Let's do that. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. So I'm just multiplying the 1 with each one of these. And I'm not worried about the decimals right now. Just pretend the decimals aren't there. I'll get to that in a second. Now let's go this way. Remember, you got to slide over one, so put a 0 here. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6. Now let's add this up. And let's see, 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 0 is 2, 3 plus 5 is 8, and bring down your 6. There's really a 0 here, so you, you can think 0 plus 6 is 6. Now, I'm thinking my answer is probably C, because this starts with a 6 and this starts with a 6. So if I was running out of time, I'd probably guess C, but let's make sure. It says round to the nearest hundredth. So first, let's figure out where our decimal goes in the answer. It works like this. I'm actually going to erase this one right here, just so it doesn't confuse us. I'm looking to the right of the decimal. And how many numbers, let me make my highlighter, highlighter a little bit bigger. How many numbers are to the right of this decimal point right here. So I have 3.25. How many numbers are to the right of this decimal? Well, there's two, isn't there? One, two. I don't care what the numbers are. I just i am saying to myself, there's two numbers behind the decimal, one, two, or two numbers to the right of the decimal. So there's two numbers here to the right. How many numbers are to the right of this decimal? There's just one, right? I don't care what the number is, but there's one number to the right of this decimal or behind this decimal. So there's one number behind. What's 2 plus 1? Right? What's 2 plus 1 if I add these? That's 3. So in total, there has to be three numbers behind the decimal in my answer. So I'm going to go put my decimal right here. 1, 2, right here. Now I have three numbers to the right of my decimal right here. See? one, two, three, which matches up with this. So that's how you decide where to put the decimal point. Now it says to round to the nearest hundredth, and I can tell you my answer is going to be C because it has to start with six, but let's let's be a little careful here before I um, guess that too quickly. To the nearest hundredth. So when it, when it ends in a TH, it means we're looking to the right of the decimal. So hopefully you remember that if I go to the right of the decimal. This is my tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place. Now, if I go to the left of the decimal, this is my ones place. But this ends in a th. That means I'm looking to the right of the decimal. So where is the hundredths place? Well, let's see. I, go, I move to the right of the decimal. Tenths, hundredths. So this is my hundredths place right here. And it says round to the nearest hundredth. So what I'm going to do is look to the number to the right of the 2. And if the number to the right of the 2 is 5 or greater, you bump this up 1. So this becomes 6.83. And that's my final answer. Again, if the number to the right of this 2 is 5 or greater, you bump the 2 up to a 3. If the number to the right of the 2 is less than 5, this would stay a 2. So my answer is C. But again, I had a feeling my um, answer was going to start with 6. I wasn't 100% sure. 
And if I was running out of time, I probably just would have guessed C. Let's go to the next one. Solve for x. I'm going to rewrite this equation over here. I'm not actually going to solve for x, though. I'm going to use my answer choices to help me. So I just recopy this over here, and these are my values for x. So one of these has to work, right? So x could equal negative 3, x could equal negative 6, x could equal 0, x could equal 9. So here's what I'm thinking. This is what the equation means. I'm replacing the x with some number, so when I divide by 4 and subtract, oops, I copied that wrong, I'm sorry. Let me change this to a 3. Let me try that one more time. I copied the equation wrong. This should be x divided by 3 minus 4. My bad on that. So it's x divided by 3 minus 4 equals negative 1. I just recopied this over here. And this is what this means. I'm going to replace the x with some number. So when I divide it by 3 and subtract 4, I get out a 1. So which one of these are going to work? Well, let's start plugging in our answer choices in for x. But be careful, a lot of times students start with the A answer choice. I am not going to do that here because A is a negative number and I'm not going to use B either. That's a negative number. Negative numbers are harder to work with. I'd rather work with positive numbers. And I don't want to use C either because 0 gets kind of tricky. So I'm just going to start with D. I'm going to plug in X equals 9. So I'm going to replace the X here with this 9. So this x becomes a 9 right here, divided by 3, minus 4. Does that equal 1? If this side, this left-hand side of the equation, equals 1, I'm done. And actually, it's not negative 1. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it's negative 1 here. I forgot to bring over the negative sign. So again, I sorry about that. I forgot to bring this negative sign over here. So again, 9 divided by 3 minus 4. If that comes out to negative 1, D is my answer. So let's do this. So what's 9 divided by 3? That's 3. Bring down your minus, bring down your 4, and does that equal negative 1? I, remember, I accidentally put 1 at the beginning. I always mess up at the end of my videos. So if this comes out true, D is my answer. Does 3 minus 4 equal negative 1? Well, think of temperature again, right? It's 3 degrees. It goes down 4 degrees. What would my final temperature be? It would be negative 1. So yes, this checks out. Negative 1 equals negative 1. And that tells me that when I plugged in 9, right? When I plugged in 9, I got out a true statement. So D is my answer. And I'm finished. And again, make sure you understand that 3 minus 4 gives us a negative 1. I don't need to check the rest of the answers. I'm finished. Let's go to the next one. I'll try not to mess this one up. I tend to mess up at the end of my video. So let's look at this one. Order these fractions from smallest to largest. These are tricky. This is a one you might want to come back and do. But before you do that, if you're going to flag a question and come back because you're like, this is too complicated, see if you can eliminate any answer choices. Remember, we want to go from smallest to largest. So there's one answer choice you can eliminate right away. Can you see it? Hopefully you're thinking you can eliminate D. D's gone, and I'll show you why. If I look just at these two numbers here, 0 0.6 is bigger than 0.5. So that tells me right off the bat that this can't be the answer because it's got to be from smallest to largest. And when I look at these two, this is from larger to smaller. Now let me make sure you're clear on that. Let's look at 0 0.6 and 0.5. This really means 60 cents. I, I mean, it doesn't mean 6 cents. 6 cents looks like this. That's what 6 cents would look like. So to help you understand this better, you can put in zeros. Um, you can put in zeros over here and here. Watch. I'm going to put a zero after the 6. It doesn't change anything. And this 0.5, I can put a 0 here. It doesn't change anything. And I can put a 0 here as well. It doesn't change anything. In other words, 0 .0, 0 0.60 is the same as 0 0.6. These mean the same thing. So don't let those zeros throw you off. 
you can add zeros at the end and you can put zeros here it doesn't change anything and now you can clearly see that 60 cents if this if if this were money is larger than 50 cents right so d's gone now keep this in mind as we work through this tricky problem here all right now if you need a guess you have a better chance of guessing but let's continue here we have two-thirds give myself some more room two-thirds two-fifths 0 0.6 and 0.5 now remember what I said don't let this zero throw you off I can add a zero here it doesn't change anything and same with this 0 0.5 I can add a zero here it doesn't change anything I can even put a zero in front doesn't change anything so I'm going to write it this way and we're going to look at this in terms of money 60 cents 50 cents what about this two-thirds I recommend you rem you memorize this two-thirds is 0.6666 it keeps going forever and you can put a zero here if you want to these are the two big ones you should remember And this goes on forever as well. I recommend that you remember that two thirds is 0 0.666, one third is 0 0.333. It will make your life easier. And I'm, a, a quick way to remember it is thinking in terms of money. One third is kind of like 33 cents, two thirds is 66 cents. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to write out a whole bunch of sixes, I'm just going to write it out to two places and say two thirds is 0.66. In other words, what I want you to remember is two-thirds is 66 cents. Remember it that way. So, two-thirds is 66 cents. Okay, how am I going to deal now with the two-fifths? Well, let me show you how I deal with numbers where the five is the denominator. If you can make this five into a ten, it's easy to change this to a decimal. So how can I turn this 5 into a 10? Well, I can mul and I want to use multiplication, not addition or subtraction. So what can I multiply the 5 by to turn it into a 10? By 2, right? Isn't 5 times 2 10? What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'll multiply the top by 2 as well. What's 2 times 2? That's 4. So in other words, 2 fifths is the same as 4 tenths. This is called expanding a fraction. Now, why did I do that? Because if something is written over 10, it's easy to change to a decimal. For example, 1 tenth is 0.1. 4 tenths is 0.4. 7 tenths is 0.7. Because we're in a base 10 system. So you should clearly see now that 4 tenths, which I changed the two-fifths to a four-tenths, and four-tenths is the same as 0.4. So two-fifths is the same as 0.4. So let me write that. So this becomes 0.4. And I can put in a zero here and a zero here. It doesn't change anything, so this is like 40 cents. Let me clear out this stuff just to keep it clean. And then what I'm going to do is... Just bring this 60 cents down, and I'll bring this 50 cents down. I'll put commas in here just to separate these out. Now it's easy to order these from smallest to largest. What's the smallest amount of money if this were money? Well, it'd be the 40 cents, right? Right here, the 40 cents. And the 40 cents matched up with the 2 fifths. So the 2 fifths is the smallest. Well, let's see. A has, the, so the two-fifths has to show up first because it's the smallest. We're going from smallest to largest. So A is a possible answer because two-fifths is first, and so is C. I can get rid of B. I'll keep that color coded here. All right, so B is gone. So I now know that my answer has to be A or C. Well, let's see. What's the next smallest number? Let's see here. 40 cents. The next one would be 50 cents right here right 50 cents which was originally 0.5 right it was originally 0.5 because 0.5 is the same as 50 cents and 
So the next smallest number that must show up is 0.5. So which one has the 0.5 next? It's A, right? So I can get rid of C, and A has to be my final answer. And there you go. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching, and good luck when you take the GED math test. Have a great day.